Well, hello one and all. Welcome back to The Weekly. This is your update video from Monday, June 13th, 2022. I have been on a, a, a hiatus here for a few weeks as uh, I've had to attend to some other big projects going on around here and things that I'll talk about in uh, the later part of today's update video. Uh, so I appreciate you being patient with me and um, it's been great to just work on some things for the future with all of you guys. I appreciate all your, your hard work. Uh, on that and um, hope you look forward to everything that's coming ahead here uh, here in the fall. Uh, to start out today's video, first of all, I've got four things that I want to walk through today uh, with you guys. <clears throat> but before we do that, I just want to take a few moments to say thank you to those of you who, uh, first of all, who've helped out with moving the sanctuary from the from the old worship center into the AGM. I know that was a big project, and a lot of you had a hand in that. So I want to I want to thank you all for that. Um, then I want to thank those of you who've also uh, helped with relocating all of the stuff that was backstage and that we had in storage in the booth. Uh, that was a big project too, and uh, there there are several of you who have helped with both of those things. So I just want to say thank you so much for investing into the team, even outside your normal task and, and role that you play, but also just doing what it takes to jump in and, and get the job done. So thank you for that. I also want to give extend a big thank you to those of you who helped with VBS and Fuel last week because I, I saw a lot of worship team members plugged in, and that was really encouraging to me. Uh, there were some of you who served with fuel and we had a great week upstairs with the seventh and eighth graders I had a great time working with the band and the uh, and the tech team up there and then i know there were a lot of you who were plugged in and helping downstairs with with vbs either uh with with the kids or or even with the babies and the preschoolers and a big Thank you to all of you who, who jumped in and helped out. I think it's really important that we're plugged into uh, the life of the church, not just uh, siloed over in the worship team, only doing things that, that apply to the worship team. But I think it's really important that we are plugged in and all carrying the load and bearing the burden of the entire church. And I saw that this past week. I was really encouraged, and so I hope you guys... Um, I, I hope you're proud of the work that you've done and, and continue to do. Uh, so thank you for that. And all that to say, we've got some really exciting weeks and months ahead of us here. There is still uh, a lot of work ahead of us as far as the Worship Center remodel is concerned. But I am very encouraged by the progress. I'm really encouraged by the end product. I think we've got some clear vision on what it is we're going to accomplish and um, I'm very encouraged by that. I think we're going to be set up for um, for some really exciting years of ministry ahead, Lord willing. So let me jump into the schedule for today. Like I said, I've got four things. I, I've got uh, two things that are upcoming that you need to have on your calendar. One, the, the next thing I want to go through the plan for this coming Sunday, which is Father's Day. And then I want to take some time at the end of today's video to just kind of do a big overview of the remodel and, and what it is we want to accomplish at a pretty high level. Um, I don't want to dig down into the weeds by any means because you will... Um, this would be, this would be a very boring video if I did that. So, you know, maybe if you need, uh, if you need something to help you sleep at night, uh, you know, send me an email and we'll make that video and help you, help you go to sleep. Um, but what I want to do, several of you have asked me just questions about things as far as seating is concerned and things about where pieces of equipment will be located or, or whatever. And so I, I just want to touch on a few of those things so that you've got a resource that you can take a look at it and, you know, share around to others on the team who may be wondering the same thing. 
But before we do all of that and we get to that section, I want to uh, I want to get through a few other things first because if you are um, if you don't care or if you've already got all the details you need, you can just turn the video off when we get to that section and you won't miss anything. Okay, so really quick, the first thing I want to touch on is the scheduling for July and August. I believe last week or maybe the week before I sent out an email uh, about uh, submitting your blockout dates for, uh, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze maybe. <laughs> nope, not today. Uh, <laughs> uh, submitting blockout dates for July and August. And uh, with VBS and Fuel, we're a little behind the eight ball on that. So I just wanted to remind you, if you're watching this video and you've not put in your blockout dates, a lot of you already have. And so I thank you for that. Uh, if you've not put in those blockout dates, please take 30 seconds. That really is all it takes. Go over to Planning Center, get, uh, submit your blockout dates for July and August. I know that July is usually a travel month for a lot of people and August is back to school. So it's there's a lot going on. Uh, so that's that's helpful to us as we as we work on putting those schedules together. Take a look at that. If you have any questions, let me know. As far as team leaders are concerned, um, you are uh, you're welcome to begin at any point putting those schedules together. Then for uh, for the first, I guess the first Sunday in July is I believe the third this year. So uh, yes, that is correct. So for July third through August twenty eighth, you're going to want to go ahead and put in those blockout dates. I would also say those of you who uh, know you're going to be gone Labor Day, September 4th, Labor Day weekend, please go ahead and put those in because that uh, those holiday weekends are always a difficult uh, weekend to schedule. So knowing ahead of time who's going to be available is really helpful uh, for us. Okay, so, um, one other thing on the blockout dates, this is just specifically for the team leaders. I don't ever want to assume that everybody knows all the tips and tricks as far as planning center is concerned with blockout dates. So I wanted to show you really quickly something that is uh, something that's a helpful tool for you as far as putting, uh, well, doing your scheduling. Let me get us over here, make sure I'm on the right screen. Nope, that's the wrong screen. That's coming later. Here we go. Uh, this is inside of Planning Center within the desktop app. I will say for those of you scheduling, using the desktop app is the easiest way to, to do your scheduling. Um, you can go service to service and put in a schedule. That's fine. And, um, but an easier way that I've found is to use the matrix view, which you'll find by going to the main page of services. Go over to matrix, you know, scroll down matrix and put in, you know, next plans. Usually I'll do like next 12 plans because it's like a few weeks out. Um, the other thing that I like to do, sometimes I'll put in like the previous four plans, uh, so I can see who's been on like the last month. And that way I'm not scheduling somebody for an upcoming service who has just served, you know, especially if they, if they don't want to do that within their schedule. So then if you pick your parameters there and then hit matrix, you'll have this really great view pop up here where you can see anything and everything as far as services are concerned from service to service. So you'll see, and it'll take a minute to populate. It will actually go in um, chronological order here. But starting with July 3rd here, you know, you can scroll down and you'll see the ban for the first service, for the second service. If you're doing production, you'll see production team and we'll have vocals down there. Okay, and so, and as you can see, um, the camera team, they've already been, uh, Randy has already been working on the schedule for the camera team uh, through August. So you, you'll see that information in there. Um, as a scheduler, what you can do is you'll just click and I'll, I'll just pick like the key spot right here for July 3rd. Click on the name. Everyone who is assigned to the key spot will pop up. You'll see if there are any blockout dates. Those will come up as well. And then you can schedule that person. And then once you have all of your schedule compiled, then the final thing you have to remember to do is go up to email these people. 
and select the nine. Make sure the nine a.m. the ten thirty a.m. service. Uh, I don't know why 4 and 5.30 keeps popping up. These were things we added during COVID, and for whatever reason, Planning Center, um, It's it, I need one of those like men in black flashy things for Planning Center to get them to forget some of this stuff. Uh, but anyway, uh, you can hit that, all 16 plans, hit next, and it'll show you the people you're getting ready to send a request to. Okay? And then you just send out those requests. I hope that's helpful. That's just a quick little tip for those of you who are, are uh, planning services. Okay? All right. Well, let's keep moving through the schedule today. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is July 17th, the worship night that we're going to have that evening. This is a Sunday evening. We will be in the A-Gym at 6 o'clock p.m., and uh, I want to encourage you to come out and be a part of this. I always do a passionate plea for for uh, for us to be involved in worship nights. I think they're an important part of building our culture of worship here at the church. I've talked about this a lot in the past, and I would encourage you to make an effort. And especially if you don't normally attend worship nights, or if you've never, if it's never been a priority for you before. I want to encourage you, make it a priority this time and come out and, and be a part of, of building that culture. Um, the singing that evening will be centered around uh, what we're learning with kings and queens. Uh, this past weekend, we, we talked about uh, conquering giants in our lives. And, and Tom has some, has some really helpful insights from the uh, historical books, the historical books of the Old Testament, um, that I think are going to be really helpful, and we want to sing songs around that that will support that. Since we're walking through all of this together as a church, I think it's important that we're also singing these truths together. Uh, so come be a part of worship night and uh, invite those that you're in community with here. I think, uh, like I said, these are important nights for us, and uh, I want us all to make the, uh, the very best effort that we can uh, to be a part of that. Okay, uh, next thing that I want to take a look at here is our upcoming uh, plan for this Sunday. And let me see if I can actually push the right button here. No, I can't. I absolutely cannot. <laughs> there we go. That is, uh, that's what I meant to push. Okay, so with uh, this weekend's schedule, you'll see that we're doing pre-service. We're doing The Father's House by Corey Ashbery. We've done this once, I believe, before. Um, then we'll go from that right into Glorious Day, Welcome and Greeting, and then uh, we'll have Amanda leading His Mercy is More, Elizabeth run to the Father, and Nate finishing out the set with Goodness of God. The, none of these keys are finalized yet. We're still working on that. But I at least wanted you to see what songs we have in the set. Most of these should be pretty familiar. The only one that may be less familiar for some of you is The Father's House. Excuse me. Then we'll go through um, the, the offertory stuff that will be pulled but and the bumper will be changed to a prayer because we are we're not do, doing a bumper for this series where we are praying to transition and then we'll go right into the set the invitation this weekend will be a come forward invitation so that will include a vocalist and a keys player uh, playing in that spot we will not have the full band back up at the very end of the service um pretty sparse notes as far as the set is concerned this weekend it should be really familiar just a reminder, uh, we will rehearse at 7 a.m. this Sunday morning, and I will have the uh, rhythm section continue to come in at 6.30. That, is, that has been working out really well. It's been very helpful for, for me from, a, um, from a, just a time management standpoint to have the rhythm section there early, have them dialed in, have their ears dialed in, and... Uh, have the opportunity to run through uh, some specific, you know, songs that we're doing. It's really helpful for me to have that time. So I, I really appreciate, it. and I hope, and I say it's helpful for me. I really hope it's helpful for you too, and that you feel like we um, we are more productive during that time. So thank you guys for making that um, making that commitment to come and be a part of it. 
Okay, well, that is where this week's video, I guess, officially ends. If you want to stick around, I'll spend about 10 more minutes here. Um, we're about 15, at about 15 minutes here. So I'll spend about 10 more minutes talking through the remodel and giving you guys a, an idea of what's coming ahead. If you're headed out, we'll see you later. For those of you who are staying, what I'm going to do is I will queue up this video uh, that Tom actually showed this a few years ago, whenever it was back in 2019, the end of summer 2019, when we started the Imagine campaign. And uh, he showed this rendering of, of uh, what the worship center would look like. Now, there are some adjustments from, from this rendering, and I'll talk kind of in some specifics about what those adjustments are. But uh, as far as the video is concerned, this will give you an idea, especially if you missed this video back in 2019, this will give you a pretty good idea of what the final... Uh, product is going to look like. So I'm just going to start this video and I will give some commentary uh, as we go along here. All right, so here we go. Roll, roll the tapes. All right, so as you see, entering into the sanctuary, you'll, you'll now enter a little vestibule area. And uh, on top, there will be now stadium seating that runs from the floor up to the second floor. Um, that shot right there should give you a pretty good idea of what the room is going to look like. On the main level, there will be removable seats, similar to what we have in the chapel right now, if you're familiar with that venue. And then up top, we'll have theatrical seating. Um, no, there will not be cup holders, <laughs> if you were wondering. There will not be cup holders. Um, and so then uh, on the floor, the idea is to give us the ability to use this for multiple different kinds of functions. If we want to have a conference in here and we want to set up round tables and chairs, we can certainly move the floor and, and adjust it in order to do so. Um, if we... You know, we, there's just a number of different things that we can do with this type of configuration. Now, one of the things that you're seeing as we're panning around here, and I know it's going pretty quickly, but I, uh, I don't want to take too much time with this. One of the things you're seeing as we're panning around is the location of the sound booth and the location of the camera platforms. Uh, I'll come back to that just in a second, but this would be uh, one of the one of the entrances and exits of the um, of this area. So as you come in the main, uh, or as you come in the doors, the entrances and exits to the worship center will still be the same, but you'll walk in underneath the stadium seating. Now as we come out here, you'll see that there the sound booth is located here in this front section. That's one of the things that's going to be a little bit different that I'll talk about Whenever, uh, whenever this animation is over. You also see the camera platforms. Those have changed a little bit recently too. And so I'll discuss that in just a moment. For the side walls, what you're seeing there, you're seeing, um, you're seeing kind of a terraced uh, side wall. That feature has actually been eliminated from the final design. We, we will still have, um, oh, hello. There's a lovely half screenshot of me. There we go. We will still have the the uh, wood paneling. It'll be on the lower half of the wall, and then the top half of the wall will be uh, sound treatment. So uh, you will still get a good um, you'll you'll still get that wood aesthetic, which uh, the final aesthetic of the room is going to be very classy looking. Um, we tried to pick things that are that are going to be more timeless and not not so trendy as, as far as that's concerned, um, even though it does have a very, a very classy uh, feel to it as you walk in. So uh, I mentioned the sound booth and the, um, yeah, I mentioned the sound booth and the camera platforms. So when we got into the new space or when we got into the space and started looking at where things were laid out, the sound booth was a little close to the stage. So um, what we ended up doing is working out a, uh, a new arrangement. And actually, I'm just going to put a little line drawing up here of it 
Let me make sure I can get to the right location here. Nope, that's not it. There we go. Okay, so what we ended up doing, if you, uh, and I don't have any pointer or cursor here, unfortunately, but uh, at the bottom of the screen, that's the stage. You can see the stage extension there. And then uh, at the top of your screen, that's the exits to the sanctuary, and, and that's the uh, stadium seating area there above. What we've ended up doing is moving the sound booth, tech booth area into recessing that into the stadium seating. Uh, and then the rows that were displaced there in the stadium seating will actually now come down to the floor. So we didn't lose any seats by doing this. Um, we, we just gained some additional uh, functionality. What that does, that puts us at a better location from the stage to mix the audio. Uh, in the in the layout that we were looking at uh, when they actually you know started laying things out in the room it was uh, it was going to be too close to get a good mix on the audio and too close to get a good visual uh, for the other uh, folks who will be down there now in this booth location <coughs> we will now have the um, front of house audio uh, technician We'll have the projectionist, the graphics um, operator, and we will have the 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 uh, lighting tech who will also be there uh, on from now on. The reason why we've made this change is many times, um, you know, you guys see a lot of Sunday morning stuff, but there are there are lots of events that happen throughout the week and, and just throughout different seasons of the year, especially during Christmas and graduation time. There are a lot of events where we have one tech available to run the entire event. And as you can imagine, if you're uh, for those events, what we typically need is lighting, um, you know, graphics, projection, and uh, audio. <coughs> typically, um, often we're not running cameras, or if we are, we've got the, you know, the team to be able to do that. But it's often the case where we need one person to run all of those things. So, uh, as you can imagine, running from from audio at one location to lighting at another location to uh, graphics at another location becomes pretty tedious. So we are moving all of those folks into one area together uh, so that that equipment can be operated by one per person should we need that. Uh, should, should, well, not should, but when that uh, situation arises that will be um, handled much better. Okay, I, I mentioned the camera platforms too. They were originally re going to be built into the upper section. We're actually bringing those down to the floor, to the front section, and uh, the, we're going to put up some portable staging that those will sit on. Uh, it'll be nice portable staging, you know, with like a nice black skirt. The, the purpose for this is to be able to adjust the, the location of the camera should we ever want to but also if we need to remove the cameras say we're doing a conference in there and we're not going to be broadcasting anything if we need to take the platform down and the cameras down that gives us additional seating then on the floor that that will be we would be able to use in that situation okay so uh, another thing i mentioned the tech booth earlier i, I want to talk about the production booth that's upstairs on the second floor. This is where, um, prior to our move to the A gym, this is where the camera team and the projection team was on Sunday morning. Well, that um, part of that booth is going away, and part of the booths will be um, remodeled uh, slightly. The middle booth, where the projectionist sits on Sunday morning, that booth is being removed. And that will now be the entrance to the second floor. There are, uh, I believe, four doors going there that will be uh, used for entering and exiting on the second floor. Then the side booth. So we had the uh, the one side of the booth that was storage, the, and then the other side of the booth that was the uh, you know camera broadcast area. Uh, the side with the camera broadcast that is going to be what's called the broadcast control room now. So all of the control surfaces for cameras, broadcast, IMAG in-house, 
All of that will be located on the uh, camera side. On the storage side, that will now become the broadcast equipment room or machine room, whatever, uh, however, whatever terminology you're familiar with there. That's going to include all the racks of equipment. So anything that basically has a fan blowing on it, we're going to put it on that side. The purpose here is to um, get the control room quiet enough so that uh, a better broadcast mix as far as audio is concerned can be, can be sent out, that those who are directing the cameras can actually hear the the program audio they can hear it clearly and know what's happening in house right the way it is now we have big um we have a big air handler in that room and we also have rack uh, you know a big rack of equipment that has fans blowing to keep equipment cool and all of that will be moved so now we will actually have a silent production space uh, both locations are, are being fitted for um small little standalone mini split air ac units so we'll actually be able to control the temperature in those rooms to keep equipment from overheating it's, i think it's gonna be a, a much more elegant solution um, from the broadcast side now we are uh, doing some up upgrades to our camera broadcast system uh one to to be able to uh improve the quality of our online stream but also to handle a big change that we are making in the middle of the stage and in the middle of the stage we're going to be adding uh, we're aiming to add a an led wall that will take up the entire middle section of the stage kind of between the curtains of backstage uh, we are still working on that there may be some modifications to that um, just to make sure that we you know fit within our budget parameters but th those are still some things that we're working out there um, but because of that, you, you'll say, well, how are we going to do baptisms? Well, uh, the baptistry will now move from the center of the stage where it has been. Uh, that is moving now, and it's going to be uh, stage left. So the side that the keyboard and the choir has been on this past spring, um, it's going to be built into the stage, recessed into the stage in that section and there will be a cover on it. So the weeks that we're not doing baptism, we'll have regular. It'll have a regular cover, and we'll have. You know, we'll be able to use that stage space for the weekends that we do have baptisms. However, uh, those that cover can be removed, and then we can. Uh, we'll have baptisms. There's also backstage, and I don't really have a good diagram to show you this, but backstage, um, there are dressing rooms now that are going to be built in in the backstage area. Uh, and so those who are being baptized will um, will come backstage. They'll use those dressing rooms. There's a new entrance near that baptistry that's being built um, that they'll go up, go out um, for their baptism, come back, and then they're right into the um, dressing room. This will help us a lot, too, as far as communication with the baptistry and stage flow and the backstage, you know, the backstage managers, they'll be able to cue those folks who are who are being baptized. It's really going to help our stage flow a lot. Um, you may say, well, there was a there was a workshop and a lot of storage and things like that backstage. Where's all that going? Well, that is all moving to the old choir room. Uh, there, we are going to build, or the I, I should say, the uh, the builders are going to build a hallway. Um, in that space and then what's now the old choir room that will be a storage slash shop area um, the offices and closets that are in that area those will all um, be combined into one kind of big room that'll be used for chair storage uh, and for riser storage things like that there's a lot of different things that we're um, that we're going to keep in that area that that we use in the sanctuary so that it's in a convenient location. Uh, so some really cool, some really exciting things ahead. Uh, and then, of course, the actual physical layout of, of the room itself. I, I think this is really going to help the room feel closer and more connected to what's going on on the stage. Um, the as you know if you've ever sat in the back of the sanctuary you can kind of feel like you're you're not a part of what's happening up front and elevating these back seats will really will 
have the effect of bringing everyone closer to the stage, uh, and I'm I'm just really thrilled about that. I, I think there are some really cool things that are going to be happening in this remodel. So there you go. There's a there's a whole lot of big picture stuff, and I've I know I've left out a lot of details. I'm sure I've forgotten things that I was probably going to mention as well. Um, uh, oh, one thing: the back screen, the confidence monitor. Those of you who are vocalists and you do lyrics, that's going to be a, a new uh, screen that's going to be in the middle of the, where the second floor opens up. Um, and then we'll also, the three TVs that we have down front right now, we're going to have a similar setup to that in the Sanctuary too. So you'll have both a larger screen in the middle and the back and some TVs for reference down front. Uh, and that just, that gives you um, more locations to look. So you're not just glued to one screen whenever it comes to lyrics. So um, yeah, some cool things happening. Those of you who are on the camera team, at some point this summer, I'm going to be putting together a uh, like a barbecue or something, some opportunity for us to get together and something that we can invite uh, new prospective team members because uh, we're going to be adding some things to the mix here that that is um, that is going to require us to to build our team and to grow our team and. Um, I will go into more detail as far as what the new camera setup looks like there. I don't want to bore the whole team with with all of those details, but just look, be looking for that. If you're on the camera team or if you've served on the camera team and you're not serving right now, uh, this is a great opportunity for you to be connected to this and to get reconnected to the team because uh, I think you'll be excited by some of the things that are coming our way. Okay, well, this has been an extra long update video. Uh, Hope it has been helpful. I look forward to Father's Day this Sunday and am looking forward to serving with all of you. As always, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, 